it's Tracy here, and I'm just gonna take a couple of minutes. Um, sorry, my doggie's right here. He wants some cuddles. Hello. I'm so cute. <laughs> just staring at me. Um, so I thought I would take a couple of minutes and just have a small discussion, stroke, um, brainstorm about the theory and application of freestyle practice. So full disclosure, I spend a lot of my time um, experimenting and growing my own practice as well as teaching it to others and um, finding, helping them find what works for them because obviously for everyone it's going to be a little bit different. But there are some um, consistent factors and I thought it'd be kind of cool to spend some time once in a while and shoot this video out to you guys in case it's helpful, in case it's just validating or a good reminder for things that we may already know but we just need to hear. Um, or maybe it's new information, I, I don't know. But um, let's dive right in. So when I watch people freestyle, there's a couple of things that I see. And the, the one factor that seems to be an impingement or a blockage from um, flowing movement or spontaneous movement or intuitive movement is losing the breath, losing the quality of the breath and losing the awareness of the breath. Um, so I'd say the number one factor for channeling your thought, for relaxing your body, for um, dropping into trust what's going to come out and what's going to happen within the movement from what you hear, what you see, what you feel. Um, and that is connecting with the breath first and foremost. This is the gateway. This is the, um, the platform by which we can access as much as possible in that present moment. And a lot of times, you know, the breath ends up being, um, the Kickstarter for us being aware of things that are happening physically, things that are happening emotionally. So when you go to freestyle and every time you find yourself getting lost in your intention, come back to the breath, feel like it is a, a recentering and not judging the quality of that breath, um, but just noticing how connected you are to it, how aware you are of it. Um, and, if you can create a change by slowing it down or breathing more fully. So when you go to put on a song, I'd say the worst thing you could do is scramble around, figure out the song, and then run, clean your pole, and then stand there and get ready to go. Um, occasionally that does yield some interesting movement, but on the whole, we're, we're lacking the mindfulness to start from a place of neutrality to see where the movement can actually grow into. Um, so what I like to do uh, and what I like to encourage is once the song gets going, um, stand near your pole, stand in a position of comfort, in a position that makes you feel uh, calm, whether that's standing beside the pole, holding it, leaning against the pole, facing the pole, you'll start to understand what works best for you. Um, and then obviously those rules can be broken and we can start to challenge ourselves by not being in our comfort zone. But beginning there, um, connecting with the breath, maybe it's important for you to close your eyes, take an inhale through the nose and let it out through the mouth. You'll notice once that happens, the body starts to collect itself and starts to relax, maybe even ground. And you'll notice that certain senses become heightened. Maybe the sense of just you inside of your own skin or maybe you're, you hear something and you'll start to get this impulse. Um, but co coming from the breath allows us to really uh, see more options. So if you're in a song, you're like two minutes in and you're going nuts and then you start to find yourself going into habitual patterns, habitual movement patterns. Oh, I've done this. And then the, oh, the mind gets going in that circular, like you've done this before. What are you doing? I don't know what's happening next. Basically the mind's pulling you out of the present moment because it doesn't actually have the ability to be present because it's a tool that helps us gather information and process. So by connecting with the breath, we can get out of the mind or at least channel our thought back to the breath and then actually come back to a place where we can feel spontaneous again and allow yourself to live in that silence, 
and live in that stillness. And that's uncomfortable for some of us because we live in a society and a culture that just does. Um, and so then the passive act of not moving when you're supposed to be moving can, can cause a lot of anxiety, even on a small scale. So give yourself that permission to do nothing because it's the space that allows something to be created. So I hope this is helpful. Um, I'm kind of like all over the place, but the summary is before you put on a song, after you put on a song, any time within a freestyle practice, whether it's the first song or the fifth or mid dance that you need to collect and you need to recenter, come back to the breath, let that be the guide, guide let that be the compass to lead you where you're, where you're going to go and, and finding out where you want to go through those impulses. So yeah, please, please start a dialogue on the page if, if this sparks up um, advice that you'd like to share with others or um, realizations that you have about breathing in your freestyle practice. And I hope this was helpful. And don't forget to breathe.